Welcome folks to this tutorial for the Narrowband IoT Hackathon. My name is Marco, I'm one of the PhD students from the Wallop community that is working in the organization of this event. I will be giving you today an insight of the kind of work you will need to perform during this two days event. And don't worry if I'm skipping some details, as in a few weeks from now we will release a technical document that will cover uh, all low level aspects such as the driver installation part. So the scope of today's video is just to give you a taste of how the acting will be. And in order to do that, I will show you the hardware you'll be working with, uh, the software components, the soft such as the Visual Studio Code and the Arduino uh, development environments, and also the Node application. And finally, I will show you uh, a demonstration with uh, a very simple Arduino uh, code that I have written. So let's jump straight into the hardware part. So this is basically the hardware. We have an Arduino Uno board, uh, which will be the interface for the kind of sensors that you're willing to use. And it will be uh, connected to the PyTrack module uh, via, via serial interface. I will now show you how to do this connection. And on top of the uh, PyTrack module, we have uh, an extension, a PyPy uh, transceiver, which supports different protocols such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and also uh, narrowband IoT, as you can see from, the, from this uh, image. Now, the way this PyCom is connected to the PyTrack board from the uh, side that has the antenna, you will just plug it in this way. So the side of the antenna facing upwards. On the back of the PyTrack module, we have some pins. These are the pins that are uh, the ground and transmitter and receiver for the UART interface. So by just using some male female cables like this one, we will connect the pins number two and number three of the Arduino to the PyTrack in order to have uh, a serial connection. So this is the final configuration that you want to see with the ground pin on the top left and the transmitter and receiver on the right with the antenna facing downwards connected to the pin number two and three of Arduino. Now on to the software part where I will show you how to download your code to upload your code to the, to the board and some extra details. So for the Arduino part, uh, I'm gonna show you a very simple exemplary code. Of course, your code will be different because you will have to deal with your particular application and the sensors that you choose uh, to, to work with. In my code, I'm just highlighting that the code is divided into two sections. The first one is basically for initialization because it is only executed once. And the second one is executed as loop. So all we are doing is basically uh, setting up the serial interface from the Arduino to the PC, which is the serial.begin, this is the baud rate, and my serial.begin, which is the other uh, serial interface with the PyTrack. And we're using, again, pin number two and pin number three as receiver and transmitter. So in the main code, all we are doing is printing sending to um, a serial monitor that I will open up in a while and sending to the PyTrack the message your data from sensor. So what you should do in order to download, uh, upload the code to your board, if you open up your device manager and you plug in your Arduino, you should see the Arduino inside of the parts and com section. In my case, it has com11. So if you go to instruments, be, a, be sure to check whether your uh, board is the, uh, is the correct one and the com is as well the correct one. So once this is done, we can compile the code
and we can upload the code to the board. Now we can open up the serial monitor to show the messages. So kind of user interface. And the UART is configured and now it's sending periodically every five seconds the message your data from sensors. Here it is only visualized the serial.println because my serial.print is going to the PyTruck. So I will now show you the PyTruck code. Actually, I will not show it uh, in detail as the Arduino one because you will have to work on your own on the PyTruck code. But now on to the next section. For the PyTruck, the procedure is pretty similar. So if you plug your device, you should see him pop up in the device manager. Now, if you right click on it on properties, you should find the name of the constructor. In our case, PyCom LTD. This is important because inside of the Visual Studio, by the way, we will provide you a, a folder with all the driver, uh, uh, an empty main and the, and the library is needed. So if you open the folder, you will be given. So Akaton Urban DT. And uh, you go down here, there is a button with, name, with the name All Commands. This is a, um, an extension called PyMaker. The details for the installation will be given in, uh, the, um, in the technical document. So suppose you have installed your PyMaker, you go to All Commands and you go to Global Setting. You must see that inside of this file, the name of your manufacturer of the board should be inserted. If your name, the name of the manufacturer that you see in the device manager does not match the one in this uh, document, your board will not be able to connect. So in our case, we have PyCom LTD. Now, if we go to all commands, we can connect our module. connecting to the com. Now what this code is doing, uh, I, will, I will not show you the, um, the whole code because basically um, what you will have to do inside of the Akaton is performing the connection to the network. In order to do that you will have to call some 80 commands. Uh, in this code all the, the right sequence of ET commands is actually already performed, so I will not show it to you. I will just show you the part that interfaces with uh, the Arduino, which is this one. So basically, we're initializing a message as an empty message, and while this message keep on, keeps on being empty, we still we stay blocked in this code section. And we performed a uart.read, so we're, re we're uh, reading every uh, 10 milliseconds, uh, sorry, every 100 milliseconds, we're reading from the UART interface uh, of the Arduino. So if I upload the code to the board, now the board is ready, and I will show you, after showing you also Node-RED, yeah, so the first AT command is sent, it's just for setting further AT commands to provide uh, a verbose output for error messages. And now it's waiting for a message from the Arduino. So the PyTruck is blocked until the Arduino communicates. I will now show you the Norder application and finally uh, a comprehensive uh, demo. Suppose now that your PyTruck uh, is well configured in order to connect to the network and it has received some data from the Arduino sensors. What it will perform next, after network connection, is sending this data to this particular address, IP address, with this port, using the MQTT protocol. More about this protocol in the technical document. This IP address is a server uh, that is running uh, uh, an application called Node-RED. 
Node-RED is just one out of the possible ways uh, uh, in order to retrieve uh, your data and uh, utilizing them, showing them in a proper way. This is the application we suggest you to use uh, because it's very intuitive uh, and uh, uh, I will show you some of its uh, powerful functionalities in a while. But it's not the only way. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you're willing to send these uh, data to a different web server or retrieve them in uh, a way that is more convenient for your application, you are totally free to do it. So I will now show you how Nodred works. First thing first, okay, reaching Nodred is very easy. You just have to type the, um, the um, IP address of uh, uh, of the code before, column 1880, which is the number of the port. And this will open the Nodred application, which I already have opened here. Inside you have, a, this is called, this blank page is called a flow. Inside of this flow you can implement whatever application you like just by using the uh, nodes uh, that you can see here on the left. There's a bunch of them, you, uh, you will have time to go and uh, look what they do. This is what our application is just doing, so basically we are doing two things. We are getting our uh, message with the MQTT protocol, so this is acting as an MQTT server, and we're showing the data we're receiving in a debug window. So if you go on this tiny little bug, this open up the debug uh, uh, page. And we are uh, getting the timestamp uh, whenever our, one of our packets arrive and we're showing them uh, with a graphical way. So there is some particular nodes under the dashboard section that allow you to uh, visualize your data. So I will now show you the final uh, demo in which I'm sending a node from the Arduino to the PyTrack and from the PyTrack to node. So now the final video. You're seeing on the left of the screen the terminal from Visual Studio and on the right Node-RED. So I will just, the, the Arduino is already uh, powered up so it's periodically sending the data but now we still have this disconnected. So now I will upload the data to the PyTrack. main.py executing, we're enabling AT command response, waiting message for Arduino, from Arduino. So now we just plug in the serial connection. And the message is received. So now we're performing network connection. And in a while we should, once the data the, while the network connection is performed, we should see the matches, message here on the debug. So we're performing all network uh, procedures. Now we're attaching to the network. These are some diagnostics, some statistics, so like the perceived power, and now the data is received. And he will keep on doing this uh, until uh, all data are received. So Thank you guys, and uh, I'm waiting for you on the 28th and 29th of November. See you!